Yeah, it's the Ron Fez Show. I'm uh, Ron, there's Fez. Hey, buddy. And a Fez fade out. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, finally. We're getting some cold weather around here, Fez, and Al Gore couldn't be more wrong. Oh, yeah. I actually had some flurries at my house today. How many did you eat? I did not. No, not McDonald's flurries. Oh, because I, I know you set a record <laughs> with like 12 or something one day. Yeah, someone had brought some free coupons <laughs> into the radio station. Speaking of which, where did you get that shirt that you're wearing now? Sixth grade? No. Why? Because I just never seen an adult wear I don't even know where the, an adult could get that. I'm not sure where I got this. It's Maybe like at the little, Gap. It's like a little green T-shirt with blue piping and something you expect to see a youngster wear. Well, I got all bundled up. I had like a sweater and a coat on top of that today. And then I get in here to the inferno, and I have to start peeling. Oh, this is regular, uh, regular temperature in here today, isn't it? I'm warm in here. Or I'll find out what stinks later. Something smells in this studio. It uh, smells like old milk or something. Uh, Brian, Brian, you're on my Fez. Hey, Ronnie, I just wanted to congratulate Black Girl for keeping it indie today by starting to show off with a little-known band called The Stones. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I noticed that, too. I noticed the same exact thing. I'm just too exhausted to talk to him. Alex, you're on my Fez. Man, I just wanted to uh, congratulate Earl on the... Mm originality that he brings to the show today. Thank I mean, those guys are underground. Are they, have, are they just playing clubs, or can we get a record? I believe <laughs> you can see them at a small a small stadium near you. Uh, Greg, Greg, you're on the fuzz. What up, buddy? Yeah. Just, just had, wanted to ask Earl how many times you have to ask him to do something before he does it. I, the whole indie thing. Yeah, I understand. You know, the funny thing is, Earl, you're not even playing any of their new music. You would go back just as far as you possibly can. Well, it's vintage stones, though. It's some girls. It's the classic 78 sound. Do you want to find yourself right now, uh, like with Dave on Friday, where it's Loser Leaves Town match? Dave is putting his belt up if the... Uh, if the listeners vote him out on Friday, he's gone. And I get, I've get i gotten emails from people going, is this a joke? I go, I'm not the one who made it up. Yeah. But if you make a statement on the air, like, oh, if this doesn't come through, I'll leave the show. Yeah, you'll be gone. Uh, join the list of castaways. There's plenty of them out there. Yesterday on the show, when Eastside Dave did his board gossip and it sucked a huge dick, he decided, oh. hey, what? That gossip? <laughs> hey, also, Fez. Do you really need to work blue like that? I'm not comfortable with it. In describing what he did yesterday, I think yeah. it's the only appropriate way to do it. You know, even though we're on uh, XM, I dumped out. I did not want people <laughs> to hear you don't. use that language. <laughs> the dump button is even in here? <laughs> it's got cobwebs on it. Yeah, I don't even know if we have one, do we? I don't think so. No. Because I know we're supposed to dump out like if someone calls up and gives a phone number. <laughs> oh, yeah. My friend Harry at 212... <laughs> Is there a dead cat in here, Earl? Try to find out. You know I'm not a guy who uh, has a weak stomach, but there's something <laughs> sick in this place. I don't smell it. Uh, Tony, Tony, you're on Rana Fez. Hello. Yeah. Hey, I just wanted to uh, get the name of that new band. I really like that sound. Yeah. I just wanted to find out what new band that was. Uh, they're called the Rolling Stones. A little band called the Rolling Stone. They gather no moss. Seems like the sarcastic caller hour, Earl. <laughs> I love it, though. <laughs> you know why? Because I want uh, you and uh, Dave to look at each other right now. Short time? Start to giggle and say, Ron can't get any help, and then hug each other and act like our little, tri <laughs> our little trick worked. I hope they do not start hugging over there. Ask Wiki if we can have nine more people, and seven <laughs> of them will be to watch over Earl and Dave till Friday. <laughs> Earl, are you up for the uh, vote out on Friday? You want to put your uh, title up? Leave it to the listeners? I would never leave anything to the listeners. They would toss me as... That, I, if there was a noose, that I'd be around. I mean, my neck would be around it right now. Your neck is not going to go around the noose. What are we going to do? Hang a noose with a black man? What fucking earth tube world do you live in? That would be a switch. <laughs> uh, Tej, Tej, you're on the Ron Fez show. Hey, boys. Hey, buddy. Uh, that's yeah. Owen Ace. We're the. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We're the buddies. Hello, buddies. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. yeah. Hello, buddies. Bye-bye. I, I, I think what you're smelling is Eastside Sphere. 
I, I it smells like Saddam Hussein was left here next to James Brown. And something is just rank in this room. Uh, Dave, why are you sitting there? How can you fucking help me sitting in the other room behind Bronx Johnny? I'm noticing. I want you to get in here and find out where the stink is coming from. Now, the, um, the, the, the whole thing about this, too, Fez, is that every time I see Dave now, his new thing is to hold a book and stand behind one of the phone guy. He's doing it over at Free FM, and he's uh, doing it over here. And um, it, I don't understand where he got this new position. What I, th what I call it is the Radar O'Reilly uh, stage business. He's got a clipboard like Radar O'Reilly on MASH. And it just walks into a scene with it. I don't know if there's anything actually on the clipboard. You know what I think it is? I think he has a deformed hand. That's the big problem. <laughs> and he's hiding it behind his clipboard. Yeah. I think I located the smell. Yeah. I think it's actually around Fez. Um, Something over here? It seems very You're really close. not smelling this. No, I don't smell anything. <clears throat> it's like an old, like uh, somebody puked into a mm. dead dog. And then left it in the sun for a couple of days. And it's right by, it's like hovering right over you. Or like under you. It's just, it's right there. It's, you're talking. I don't smell. Brown, There's nothing in the garbage favor, can. Do Dave. Put your hand down his ass and see if he shit himself. <laughs> Because there's something terrible here. I may have to even, I never walked out on the show. I might have to do this out on the, on the street. Check his feet. Okay. Do not check my shoes or my diapers. You Mr. really don't smell this at all. No, I don't smell it. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's right by him. It's right by you, Fez. Yeah. It's, no, it's on him. Well, I, what? <laughs> it's on you. Either I don't know if you sat in something <laughs> or you're the cause, but it's it's the smell is on you. <laughs> I didn't step right, in anything. Just, forget, just open me up some windows, please. Okay. It's fucking disgusting working here. Seriously. All right, uh, Ron and Fez show, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Keith, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm just uh, clean-smelling Fez. Hey, you know what that smell is? What? It's Earl's laundry, because he never leaves the studio. It might be Earl's playlist. Call huh? Carter and ask him to teach you about independent uh, music. I asked you to do that yesterday, Earl. I understand that, and I'll, I'll definitely talk to Carter. I will definitely make that phone call. We will talk, and he will... Is this the tape from yesterday? Playing back? It might be a best of. Because I hear the same thing every day around here. Sean, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, you guys. Um, I'm going to be gone Friday, and I was wondering if absentee you know, voting, is it in now, or can we start today, or what? You know, I don't want to go through the whole absentee voting thing. Well, It'll be straight up after uh, Friday, right? Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll cancel my plans, and I'll definitely be there to vote. All right, peace. Yeah, right. you do the absentee ba uh, balloting, then you got to get the soldiers' votes from Iraq and everything else. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm sorry. I'm not even a fucking weak stomach guy, but something is rank. Is it me? I'm not, I can't get over next to you. I mean, I know I had a problem today in the apartment. What was the problem? Well, they turned the water off in, uh, on Retard Island. They turned the water off. The whole island? Um, at least my building that I know of. They said emergency water repairs, and I had no water to shower with today or brush my teeth. That's what you smell like after one missed shower? I don't know. I don't smell it. Is it bad? There's something bad, and I'm not going to go over and start smelling you. That's disgusting. But uh, Dave did say it came around you. So you just wake up this morning, and there's no, uh, there's no water. Yeah, there's no water. I called the doorman. They said it's off until 4.30 this afternoon. Why don't you take, um, I don't know the best way to say Puerto Rican uh, bath. What would you call that, I guess? Why don't you just take a makeshift thing with some, you know, deodorant and powder? Well, I, I mean, I tried. I just couldn't brush my might, teeth today. I don't know what it is. And I couldn't bathe. But on that island of uh, misfit chromosomes, a retard must have... Uh, yeah, they must be redoing the tub so the retards can't get more than an inch of water in them. 
I might need you to run across the street to that hotel and just run a shower. <laughs> see, Earl, see if we, what they'll call them for a room. He's not going to use it, but we're just going to go in there and scrub them down. I am not going to go pay for a hotel room just to use the shower. I don't smell it. I, I mean, don't know I, if it's you. I don't know if it's you, and I'm not going over there, but this fucking room is rank. It smells like uh, death. I mean, I feel all filmy and greasy from not getting my morning shower like I like. It smells like a mummy has shit itself. <laughs> like a very century-old shit stank. <laughs> Did you wear the same underwear? No. I mean, it's clean clothes. It's just that I didn't get a chance to bathe. God, man. I don't know if I can do this. It can't be that bad. I honestly don't know if I can do this. And by that, I mean live my life. It can't go on like this, Earl. This can't be the way my life turned out. And how bad is the odor in there? Forget <laughs> the fucking odor. You, Dave, and Fez is stank. Fez, luckily you're, you're a fucking stinking genius. Because <laughs> if you weren't funny, I seriously, I would fucking leap. And I know I wouldn't die. I'd probably just get paralyzed and be stuck in a room with you guys talking to me f forever. I'd try to run some wet naps over me or something, but that's yeah. just going to be that lemony wet smell. Uh, I'll take the lemony wet smell. That that smell on top of my own. It's just terrible. See, I usually take a shower, too, when I get home in the evening, but last night I just skipped it and figured I'd just wait for the morning. All right, so now I'm in 48 hours deep. Yeah. So... It's it's actually like two showers that I miss because of the way you know, I bathe. Maybe it's not you. Maybe some smelly monkey fucked a corpse in here, and that's what I'm smelling. I wish. I wish it was a monkey fucking a corpse. Come on. But the, seriously. I'm not, what is the new thing, Lenny Bruce? What is this all about? I'm dirty, and I'm not too happy today. Yeah, well, it's like I'm doing a show with a fucking HBO special. I don't need to hear. I don't need this, Fez. God, that's hideous. I hope it's not you. It's like the Mean Line Massacre fucking took place in here. <clears throat> I just feel bad. You know, I don't feel like myself when I can't go in there and scrub, you know, all my uh, crevices and rolls. Get that's in there awful. deep underneath. Seriously. Oh, it's like one of those African death ditches took place where some kind of mass murder took place and then they're left in the African sun. Is that nice to say? <laughs> I smell like an overheated mass murder. An African mass murder. Uh, you know how they are. Well, they'll fucking line them up over there, Earl. Oh, yeah. Just piling them one on top of the other. Uh, yeah, and then try to do a fucking show with that. Try doing a show with a mass grave. <laughs> it's impossible. I can't go on like this. My life is... I gotta wake up and, and have a different life. I need to stockpile some water or something. I hope it's only today. Seriously, if I woke up from this fucking dream and I turned out that I was a Mexican dirt farmer having a nightmare, I'd be so ecstatic. <laughs> Bronx Johnny, don't give me the thumbs up every time I say something Latino. Between me and that fucking guy... Uh, that that bull rider that Johnny was so uh, <laughs> proud of. By the way, uh, Blowhard, of course, watched that bull rider on TV. Why wouldn't he? <laughs> and it took place during one of the football games. During one of the football <laughs> games, Blowhard said during a commercial, I switched over and watched the bull riding, right? He said he saw our guy. He won the thing. Of course. And uh, Rudy Giuliani showed up in a cowboy hat and chaps. How embarrassing. Yeah, he's, well, it's on purpose. Like, hey, hey, seeds, vote for me. <laughs> and oh, wait. What the village people are going to look like uh, even later in the future. Oh, I hope that's not you, Fez. Well, I mean, I can't deny that it could be because I'm just, I'm waterless. I mean, I did the thing where I took a napkin to my teeth and tried to wipe them off that way. All you're doing is moving the dirt around. I tried to get the some of the film off of me. I just feel like a grease bucket. God, it's terrible. Well, how would you not know you stank when you got in here? <coughs> well, I didn't smell it. I'm not even getting used to it. Normally, <laughs> like, you could fucking do a show with a dead skunk, and sooner or later your nose will shut down. You know, you're making me self-conscious about it, and you're going to make me sweat more and be nervous thinking about it. 
Uh, Brian, Brian, you're on a fez. Hey, I thought you guys were bullshitting about that fainting goat thing, but yeah. uh, last night's episode of uh, Dirty Jobs, Mike Rowe goes to a goat farm and actually shows that the goats faint. It's like a genetic abnormality or something. Yeah, like you yell you at them and they doing. faint. Yeah, yell, excited, whatever, and they just drop, and it's hysterical to watch. But I would love to I, do... I you, guys would... uh, you know, remember how Jesse Owens, they had that uh, movie of him where he raced a uh, thoroughbred and uh, beat him? I would love to do something where it's man versus beast. We get Earl in here and a goat, and I yell at both of them and see who faints first. <laughs> uh, my money's going to be on Earl hitting the ground. His hose will be straight up in the air first. Put the money on the goat. I, I, I definitely would beat a goat. And fainting? That's what you're fucking proud of? I'm not proud of it, but I you definitely can faint beat a faster goat. than a goat. Can you can't even follow this conversation we're having now. I feel like I'm doing the show with a red tide. It just feels like all kinds of marine life has died up and on the beach. We put fucking headphones on it, give it a mic, and I'm trying to do a show with it. Well, I'm trying to do my best in here. I've got my legs crossed and my arms down. I feel like uh, you got wheels on that uh, on that chair? Yeah. All right, Dave, push him through a car wash. Just run him through as fast as you can. That could kill me. You don't want him. I'm going to give you extra money. Go through it twice. Oh, man. Did your appendix burst? I don't... Something <laughs> fucking stinks. I don't think so. I just didn't get to do my morning routine. None of it. I didn't have water to flush with. You get one flush when the water goes off. Wh whatever was left in the tank. Well, uh, nothing of yours is going to go down with one flush, that's for sure. It never has. I don't want you to brush your teeth with. Cancer? No, a napkin. Why would I use cancer? I'm not going to, like, put toothpaste on a tumor. It does smell like a tumor's opened up. <clears throat> well, there's nothing we can do about it. it. Smells like 4th of July at Earl's house. That's a sweaty holiday. Everyone is. <laughs> Let's face it. A blizzard over that place stinks. <laughs> uh, hey, it's Big A. Big A. Big A. Big A. Hi, Ronnie. Hey, Big A. Um, the reason why I called is I wanted to personally thank um, Hard Rock Johnny for uh, giving me the free meal, uh, the free lunch of yesterday. Oh, that's very cool. So uh, you did head down the... To the Hard Rock, and he took care of you for lunch. You showed up down there? Uh, yeah, yeah. I sure did. Um, it was happy to see me. I'm sure he was. He never even met you before. Who doesn't like Big A? Big A. I'm not real thrilled with him. Big A, what did you eat for lunch? Uh, I had buffalo chicken wings and a 10-ounce burger. Way to break the bank on the guy. What? He just got burger and a side. He got two entrees. Hard Rock invited him to lunch and he went and ate two entrees. Are you telling me wings aren't a side? No. Is meat ever a side? And I'll have a side <laughs> of meat. Did you walk out with any of the guitars? Uh, no. No, Fez. No. Oh, oh, got you good. <laughs> yeah. I feel gotten. <laughs> All right, Big A. I'm glad to hear you had a nice lunch over at Hard Rock Johnny's. I bet he'd love to see you again today. Uh, actually, uh, actually, I'm working. I, uh, yeah. I would have liked to see the look on his face when you showed up for that free lunch. You're really <laughs> here. Here in my restaurant where um, uh, I work. Can't believe it. You're here. You know what, Fezzi? You would be winning this if you didn't stink like a fucking month-old cheese. <laughs> All right, Big A. Talk to you later, buddy. Uh, no, I take care of uh, I also want to uh, uh, thank uh, uh, Tony. Um, I, I get to his dot com. Uh, 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 she made me... Uh, Dessert? Uh, uh, no, a mod. Oh, you're a mod uh, now. Yes. Now you're a mod. Where, what are you a mod for? Uh, get to his. Get to his. Get to his dot com. Classy. Yeah. All right, I'll be checking that out, Big A. Um, uh, 
Thanks for asking. All right. You want to no thank problem. your local Chrysler <laughs> dealer? Did you get a car out of this deal at all? Uh, not yet, Fezzy, but thanks a lot. Fezzy, <laughs> slow down. Every time you get angry, the stunt kicks up. Oh, gee. All right, talk to you later, Big A. All right, take care, guys. God, everybody loves Big A. Big A. Big A. Big A. He showed up at the Hard Rock to get a free meal. Yeah, but the place was packed for him. It's the same as like when Britney went out to that Vegas club. <laughs> he should be getting money. Uh, Johnny got ri uh, away with this like it was nothing. For basically a burger and a side. It wasn't a side. It was two entrees. Well, basically, a lot of times, chicken wing could be considered a potato. No, they're a meat. They are? Yes. Remember they had chicken fries out one time? <laughs> one of those places tried it? I think it was KFC tried chicken fries. And again, I think that was an entree. Oh, I can't work in here. The stink is so bad. Try not to concentrate on it so much. It smells like slave quarters. I didn't say black slaves, Earl. It could be ancient fucking Roman slaves, which also turned out to be black. But they got, you know. Boy, talk about wrong place at the wrong time all the time. Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Can't turn a corner without getting turned into a slave. Oh, no, Earl. You built the pyramids. Last thing you want is the doorbell to ring. It's because it's <laughs> someone here to enslave you. God, you stink. I would be <laughs> like saying it. I can't help it. I might. That might be the show for me. I might have to walk out. <laughs> Don't. So, we're only a half hour into it. you got to be kidding me. No. I can't take this. And I haven't puked yet. All right, uh, now Hard Rock wants to call to say he wants to thank Big A. Hey, Hard Rock. <laughs> yeah, I want to thank Big A. But it's weird. I had you on speakerphone, and my office started to smell. You, I was getting the smell over the I know. Oh, yeah. be quiet, Hard Rock Johnny. It was great having Big A here yesterday. I wish you sure. would come back more often. Yeah, yeah he's rid of the leftovers. <laughs> he had an appetizer and an entree, well, and he didn't get dessert because he forgot that dessert's always part of the meal. See that, Fuzzy? <laughs> And it's uh, good for Johnny, because it's the type of thing that'll make page six. <laughs> I did. I called in. I called Russian Malloy. You know, the guy had a big A sighting. It wouldn't make page 30. Come they on. Said, they said, big A. A big A. How come everybody loves big A but you? I don't see the attraction. You know what? You wanted to be a mod on Get the Hiv. <laughs> Ronnie, he said that you are, he told me, it took a while for him to get out, but he said you are a comic genius. Oh, that's very nice he said, to hear. I call Ronnie a comic genius. Well, that's very nice. He said he doesn't have any kind of name for Fez that he want to repeat <laughs> in a public restaurant, but he did say you were a comic genius, and he said he loves you guys because you build him up and you make him feel good about him. Well, uh, he should feel good about himself. He's the fucking coolest, daddy Oh, He is. He's big A. Big A. How did he get all that out in between orders? <laughs> Took a while, but he did it. My whole he had an appetizer and an entree. Two entrees. He had chicken wings and a burger. Big Hard Rock burger. He did get the ten ounce burger, by the way. Of course he did. <laughs> and he had a couple of beers. Yeah. <laughs> but you know he's he's good. He's big age. Cool. He is Britney Spears, all drunked up in your place. I love the confidence. I'm going to show up for my free meal. <laughs> the guy brought it up on the air. Now I'm going to swing by and pick it up. I'm surprised you didn't get other people just saying they were Big A. Yeah. Oh, I've, met a I've met Big A before. Sure. Everybody loves Big A. Everybody loves Big A. I, I want to get one of those shirts. I don't. Uh, Frenchie wants to talk about Big A. Hey, Frenchie. Hi, guys. Hey, darling. Hi. Um, me and Big A and Mopsy Life Chris went to Hard Rock. Um, yeah. I believe it was in November or October. And none of your waiters or waitresses or hostess would get Johnny for us. They all just kept blowing us off and said, oh, we'll get him, we'll get him. We had a whole meal there, and nobody would get Johnny just for us to say hi to him. And He's the big wheel right now. i got news for you. Oh, Frenchie's on the line. Complaint department. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? What does she ever complain about? Now, now, why do Mafia a Life Chris go to the Hard Rock Cafe? It's not a segregated restaurant. <laughs> he calls the show here yesterday, dropping the end bomb. You know what? <laughs> Fezzi, I had a nice note from him last night. He's a very nice uh, young man. He just got carried away, that's all. I thought he was inviting you to a lynching or something. I don't want to turn this into another Kramer situation. <laughs> he just got a little carried away. All right, Frenchie wants to see you more, Johnny. Frenchie, anytime you come out, just ask for me. They'll tell them, you know, hopefully you bring Big A again. Though. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you know, when we were angel. asking, they just kept saying, oh, yeah, we'll get him. He's back there. Nobody would get him for me. I said, I just want to say hi. I just want to say hi. He knows who I am. And they just kept blowing me off the entire time. Sorry. While they were doing their job. Why is it always a complaint when Frenchie calls? Because I never heard her complain before. Me. Security hit me. I can't get the waiter to get the manager. <laughs> Something's always going on. Baby, I never complain about you. Hey, uh, Frenchie, I got a uh, email from Crazy Clarius today. Did you? Yeah. How, how is she? Uh, holding on. Just yeah. keeping it all together, yeah. Yeah, I've, I got a little snippets of her every every once in a while of how she's doing. All right, French. All right, I love you guys. Uh, right, hold on, French. Uh, I'm going to take one, uh, one more call. Okay. Uh, a guy says he has a problem with you. It's Dennis. Do you know him? Dennis? Yeah. All right, hold on, I'll say. Dennis, real quick, what do you got? Buddies, yeah, yeah. listen, is, uh, is Frenchie gone? Because no. she invited a bunch of people to get on Pal Talk last night during a free FM show. Yeah. Me and a friend of mine both jump on there, and we both got uh, kicked off immediately without saying word one and just blocked. Oh, uh, I will take care of that. I, mean, that I was actually sure driving. I wasn't in the room. I was driving. I was just plugging Pal Talk for them. Yeah. No, I, and, I didn't mean it was uh, you. No, 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 I'm in there. You probably had a black name, and I'll take care of it. If you just PM me. <laughs> Did you say a black name? Yeah. Yeah. You That's her man. Name. Yeah, don't black go in there as Tyrone goat. or Leroy. <laughs> or fainting goat? Black name means you didn't pay for it. So okay, nice. I'll take there care of it. Just PM me. I'll take, I'll take right. care of you. All right. Okay, Dennis, you got what you need. Thanks, okay. French. Bye, bye guys. Bye. All right. Save bye, Frenchie. Save Dave. Bye, bye. Save Dave. Oh, please. I hope not. Why does a black name mean you didn't pay for it? I don't know. That's well, because they assume. Mommy like Chris is behind all this. That racist. <laughs> Why are you calling him a racist? He's the one who uses the N word on this show. Um, brother, I never been to your house before. <laughs> I never met your family. <laughs> I'll fucking tell stories forever. Don't. The guy had a faux pas, a little slip, slip of the tongue. Do you think that word ever slips out? Yeah, I think it could. I think it could. I think it was premeditated. I can't wait to get on there and start using it. I'll sit around and tell Watley stories. <laughs> don't. From now to the to the cows come in. Please don't. <clears throat> and uh, those cows would actually smell better like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rude. All right, thanks, uh, Johnny. All right, boys. All right, take See care. Ya. Uh, Bo, Bo, what do you got for us, pal? Hiya, buddy. Yeah. Uh, I've been told my whole life there's no such thing as a free lunch, and then Big A calls in. Oh, and there is. Oh. There, there is a free lunch for the cool, for the cool people. They get everything. Uh, don't confuse yourself, Bobo. Uh, there wasn't a free lunch yesterday. There was free lunches <laughs> with multiple entrees. He got an entree and a side. What are you fucking counting calories over there? <laughs> he got a gi the ten ounce giant Hard Rock burger and, and the large order of wings. I'm starving, but I know I wouldn't be able to keep the food down. And those wings, you get an order of those wings there. That's for the table. That's the you know not like you. Why are you worried? What has it fucking got to do with you? Because he goes down there and he takes advantage because everyone thinks he's so cool. He was invited. He showed up. He had a couple of beers, a case of beer, uh, some uh, burgers, and some uh, wings. What's the big deal? I'm trying to bankrupt the place. Let me tell you right now. If I had my own restaurant, and I'd give out free meals to Henry Winkler. Yes, he's a celebrity. Well, Big A is in his own way. Not in my world. I love that nickname that he has for me, too. Comedic genius. That's a good nickname. Nice. All right, thanks, Bo. Hey, one quick question. Yeah. Uh, th that smell around Fez, did he happen to fall asleep right before the show started? All right, Bobo. <clears throat> I'm going to email Ron tonight and say that Bobo has hurt my feelings. Uh-oh. All right, talk to you later, Bo. Okay, love you. Bye. Fez, put that painting down. Put the painting down. No, he's got so many things to say. Don't. Don't you do it. He's got things to say. Don't you do it. Well, I wonder what he has to say about something like this. Have no. this got hurt? No, don't. That's a beautiful painting. Um, hey, it's Radio Shark. Hey, don't Shark. Hey, how are you? Good. Now we know there's another reason why Fatty's father would turn the hose on him. And I bet it wasn't just for sand. Does That's... it smell like a Woodstock Porter John in there? It really does smell like the third day of Woodstock in oh, the shit oh, house. Boy, Radio Shark, he loves to deflect the fact that he was the one putting off stink bombs at different Ron and Fez events. Was he? Yes. 
He totally was. He got caught doing it by Eastside Dave. Uh, Riley, you're on Fez. Hey, what's up, Bice? Yeah. Hey, hey uh, has Earl ever gotten a hold of that female intern that's supposed to come in and, you know, inter get interviewed and everything? Yeah, whatever happened there, Earl? Yes, everyone was contacted as far as that, and we were we did interview them. Finally going to have some women interns get, here? Oh, you're going to get right on it? <laughs> <laughs> Earl, you've been found out. I mean, I've had... I have, quite, I have many, many contacts right now. Many contacts. When's the last time you booked a guest, Earl? Uh, Who was president? Do you remember? Bush, uh, Bush two was president. Bullshit. I remember Samuel Jackson was the president the last time you rolled somebody <laughs> through here. I think Sodom was still in power, at least. Is that right, Earl? Sodom days? No, he was not. What's wrong with your arm? Power. Is he scratching your, uh, your scales? It may be the fact that I didn't bathe today or something. My tattoo... For some reason, like the black outline of it, just where the black ink is, yeah. um, for some reason, every now and then, the black outline kind of raises up like I get hives or something. It's four years old, though. I know, but still, it, it still happens to this day. It's all, it's all bumpy. Just where the black lines, where the black ink is on my tattoo. Man, that red is already starting to fade, too. Remember how bright red that used to be? Yeah, it's my Buccaneers logo tattoo when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the Super Bowl. Well, that had to be a long time ago. Well, 2002 <laughs> season. And, yeah, that used to be a real crimson scarlet. Now it's basically like I have a nice pink pirate flag flying on my arm. Yeah, it's you, all right. You're like the seats there in uh, Raymond James <laughs> Stadium. They just fade. And it's not like this body gets a lot of sunlight on it. Mm. So I don't know where this color's going. Uh, Jim, Jim, you're on a fez. Hey, if Earl's got a connection to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, maybe he can get that indie band, the Rolling Stones, in there. Earl, what do you think? You get your boys in? I can definitely get the Stones in, or at least a stone in. You can. I, I mean, I, I can make some calls. Give me a fucking date, you get a stone in here. Well, I can give you a date, a specific date. And then that'll be the day that we do Loser Leaves Town with you. Give me a date. I don't know if I could give you one because it's still, well, they're technically it's still on tour. I'm not, I didn't say that to be tomorrow. I said give me a date. You just said I can get a stone in here, right? Yeah, I could probably get, I know of a stone I can get. I can get Which one? Ron Wood. If you get Ron Wood in here, you'd be a fucking hero. Now, he says this like... Oh, I could have gotten Ron Wood in here. Like, we haven't time. known him for years. We've known <laughs> Earl for seven fucking years, yeah. and I've never seen him with Ron Wood. <laughs> I guess, yeah, best friends. <laughs> Why, did you want Ron? I know I can get Ron Wood. <laughs> did you want a Rolling Stone in here? You never asked me. Of course I could get a Rolling Stone in here. Easiest thing in the world. What is your big friendship with Ron Wood? <laughs> <laughs> That's the nuttiest <laughs> question I've heard yet. No, I mean, if you fucking bring Big A in here in a new haircut and <laughs> wear some kind of zebra fucking coat, I'm going to know who it is. Ron Wood is uh, <laughs> putting on the weight. <laughs> no, actually, I, I kind of know him. I, Bullshit, I mean, well, I take it back. I, this is Godfather. We've had a couple of conversations. We, I, the two times... I'm, that, well, I'm willing to hear the details the two times of that, you... And your friendship with Ron Wood. I mean, it's not necessarily your friendship. We just had a very good conversation. We had two very good conversations. I want to hear about it. What happened? <laughs> well, the, Come on, start me up. Well, the first time I met him it was at, um, he had a, a release record release party. Uh-huh. And we were talking about, uh, his, he wrote a, he had a, uh, not a photography book, an art book of some of his paintings. And I was talking to him about the, uh, the paintings. And we were talking about art in general. It sounds like a fan fucking walked up to him. That doesn't mean that you're friends with him. I came up and talked to him at, during his release party. I came up and talked to him about his work. That's not a friendship. And then the second time he That's came... That's him working. And then the second time, uh, when I was at WNEW here in New York, he came up uh, with Rod Stewart unannounced. And the first thing he says when he comes through the door, because I was the receptionist at the time, he walks through the door, he just points <laughs> at me, and he goes... He goes, I know you. I remember you from the party. How you doing? And we just started to talk for like a good five, ten minutes again. That was before we knew you. So that's a full fucking eight years at least, maybe nine years ago. 
that you were the fucking, look at him drinking his water. You know when Earl gets busted, he's drinking water. You're telling me you were at a fucking reception desk nine years I ago. I swear to God, that is an absolute true and story. And because of that, you feel comfortable that you know Ron Wood and you can get him to walk in here. You were also the receptionist for Mannix, too, weren't you, Peggy? That's like my dentist from nine years ago, the receptionist, is going to say, yeah, I can fucking know Ron's going to remember me because he used to come in there and, and say, hello. It's that no one else would think if it wasn't a famous person that that person would ever remember them. No, it was just two occasions, and the second one, I mean, the second time completely blew me away in the, in the fact that I was like, wow, he remembered me? From Who was going to forget a bald head of black guy dressed in black? First of all, the first time he saw you, he thought you were going to stab him. When you didn't, then that just stayed in it. Like he fucking said to, uh, turned around and said to Rod Stewart, no, 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 don't run. I fucking remember this guy. Just treat him nice. So what's your window of opportunity that you need to get Ron Wood on the show? Well, the, well, the smart ass from Utah once like, hey, when you get the stones in here, I was like, oh, fine, I can, I can try to do make it. it. Yeah, what's the do date? It. I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to give you a date, but I'll make it happen. I would have loved to call the radio station when Earl was the receptionist. Yeah. Hello, program director, please. I'll get right on that. Weeks go by. You're still on hold, waiting for the phone call to be put through. WNEW, peace ho. <laughs> WNEW, peace ho. <laughs> WNEW, peace ho. These phones are busy. Uh-oh, look who it is, Ron Wood, former face, now Rowan Stone. Hold on, Mr. Wood, WWNW, peace hold, WNW, peace hold, WNW, peace hold. Hey, uh, Brian, Brian, you're on the fence. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Yeah. Got a new uh, segment for the show. It could be called Earl's Empty Promises Corner. Earl, you're going to come through with this one, right? I'm coming through with this one. Yeah. Absolutely, we'll do this. I'd love to have a, you know, at least a target date on this. Give us a season. Spring. Uh, Dave, I need you to come in here. All right, so before spring is up, <laughs> before the last flower blooms. That's right, the end of spring. If not, get over there, sit in your chair, put on your headphones. Spy report. Spy report. Spy report. All right, uh, a guy named David just sent this to us. Good news, Giants fans. It's all coming down. Yeah. Tom Coughlin has been... Extended by what? one year. Oh, bullshit! A one year extension? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? He had a year left. He signed Tom oh, Coughlin. No. Oh, Nightmare. my God. No, don't clap for that. Nightmares come true. I thought you were going to say exterminated. <laughs> Fuck this shit. Well, I guess the Maras want to lose. Let's lose <laughs> Peaky. Let's keep uh, Coughlin around. Let's give uh, extensions to every... Let's... Did anybody see an extension coming? No. Hey. No way. If there was one coach that was going to be fired in the NFL, it was a definite. It was Tom Coughlin. Now, so I guess, what's that, two years? Because he had a year left? Well, he has one year left. And then, yeah, if there's an extension, it's two yeah. years. And I guess that means two years for his son-in-law, Snee. So great job, <laughs> Giants. Great fucking job with, with running my team, the beloved Giants, into the ground. What happened to you giving up sports? I'm, a, I'm out. I'm out of sports. I'm out of sports. I'm not watching sports anymore. The Yankees can't get it done. The Giants are a mess. The Nets are terrible. Jason Kidd's got a lot of problems. I'm, I'm done with them. I need to watch reality shows or CNBC or something to make my life intelligent. I can't keep putting all this passion into sports and owners and general managers drop the ball all the time. That's it. I'm uh, stunned. Extension for this fucking guy. I am absolutely shocked. A guy who started the season with his team six and two, then ended it with two and six, and he gets an extension. You know we love what, we, what you've been doing, especially that last eight games of the season. We'd love to keep you around. That's like giving an extension to, like the Jets giving an extension to Rich Kotite ten years ago, or Germany giving an extension to Hitler. Just fucking give everyone. They would extensions. have. They would have. It was us. <laughs> they came in and cut him short. Uh, Earl, phone call from you, for you. 
It's Mr. Ron Wood. Hey, Earl. How you doing? Earl, it's Ron. Hi, Ron. Ron Wood. I, I, you remember me from nine years ago. I, I saw you at the reception desk. I can't believe you remembered me. I was listening so surprised that you knew who I was when I ran into you and in passing nine years ago. What year was it, Earl? Um, this is around 93, 94. All right, forget nine years ago. <laughs> You're honestly feeling like you've got a, a fucking Ron Wood connection from 14 years ago when you worked the reception desk. You feel fucking strong about that. I, I am strong about it. Absolutely strong. Why? Why? You insane fuck. Why would you feel good about that? This is David Chapman talk when you start to talk like this. This is... Hey, Ron, I served Bruce Springsteen drinks in 1997 at this Irish pub. I think I can get him in by next week. It's almost, you know what, I expect that kind of story out of uh, Dave on his last week. I don't expect it out of you, Earl. This is going to happen. This is definitely going to happen. It's going to happen by the end of spring. So, summer starts, what, June 21st? We will have Ron Wood on this show June by June 20th, 2007. That's going to be a big show. And don't think I won't get a Rolling Stones calendar and just mark off the dates. You smell fussy. I can't help it. It's bad. Can you do anything about it? No, I mean, I tried to put some deodorant on. That's nothing more I can do. I missed the shower. I missed a couple showers because the water's off in my building. I would rather you took a shit bath. I bet you would smell better than what you do. And it does smell like it's coming deep from in. You might have problems, bro. You think so? You're dying from the inside. You're dying from the inside. Maybe and we can put an FBA robe on Fez to cover it up. Just something to cover it up because I think the T-shirt's making it worse. Do you got to plug FBA every day? Is that it? No. I just meant, I know that there's a, ro a big thick robe back there that can cover it up. Are you part of this Get the Hiv with... Uh, no, I, I just heard about this website. <laughs> the new mod. <laughs> it seems like it's uh, it's a spinoff of what you're doing. Yeah, it sounds awesome. I'm going to check it. Anything, any uh, website with a virus in it is good. Yeah. Uh, Tom, Tom, you're on Fez. Hey, guys. How you doing? Tommy, hey. can you hear me? I can hear you. Tommy. Or I'll call for you. It's Rod Stewart. Hello, Mr. Stewart. Hello, hello. Yes. Rod, this is Rod. Yeah. Yeah, I was just calling. I wanted to say that I, I, I remember Earl. I'll call Rod for him. Well, that's a terrible impression. I bet that's what we get June 20th, 2007. Well, one of you listening to the radio, you got no fucking <laughs> talent at all. Uh, Mike, Mike, you're on my fez. How are you? Mike, go ahead. Hey, didn't uh, that smelly homeless Fez predict that Coughlin was going to get fired? <laughs> yeah, you did, Fezzy. We yeah. all thought he was going to get fired. I mean, I definitely thought it was a sure thing. I thought it would be. I was surprised that we hadn't heard about it by now, that he was fired. The fact is, the guy deserved to get fired. The, if they didn't fire him, well, that's their choice. To give him extension... That's just not paying attention to the fans at all. No, it's not, and it's the ghost of Wellington Mara hovering over these guys' heads because apparently he didn't believe, you know, in firing a guy after one season. But, you know, God bless his soul, Wellington Mara is dead. Please, move on into a modern sports world now. You can't have this guy here. Well, in two years, you'll be able to take a good look at things and decide where your Giants are going to go. The Giants are going down a tube. They're, they're, they're in the toilet now, Mr. By that time, Tiki will be on America's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> yeah, leaving us behind. Thanks a lot, Tiki. I can't believe this. I agree with you and not with our own Fez. I think Tiki's making the right move. After ten seasons, he wants out. He wants the broadcast career. Get out now. Betrayal. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, doubt that uh, the extending Tom Coughlin has something to do with Tiki. In other you words, might be right about that. Yeah. Like, if, if Tiki had gone to manager and said, look, I'll play another year, but Coughlin's got to go. They're getting rid of Coughlin. So it really is the coach's job to go, Tiki, I know you want to leave, 
but we're going to get a championship. And you don't want to miss that. You don't want to spend the rest of your life thinking, I could have had a ring. He, Tiki does not believe there was any chance, even in the playoffs this year, that he was going to go to the Super Bowl and win. Because what player after 10 years wouldn't want that? No, he That's didn't. insane. Yeah. yeah you, can, you can just read faces. His smiling, his laughter, his... You have that ability, Dave, to read people. Yeah, You're amazing that way. I can tell when someone's uh, head isn't into it. I'm only kidding. You're an idiot. Oh. Now, are you nervous about uh, Friday? Yes, I am. But I, I, I manned up. Unlike Earl and Ron Wood, I'll man up in this situation. All Earl did is keep is extend his job to June 20th. It's brilliant when you think about it. What happened yesterday on the show was Eastside Dave came in and did one of his board gossip things that just laid there like a dead egg. And he has said that on Friday he will do another edition of board gossip and let the listeners decide if he stays with the show or not. And it was all Eastside Dave's idea. True. Ryan, you're on run Fez. Hey, what's up, buddy? Yeah. I got a quick question for Dave. Dave, do you think Bill Parcells is a good coach? Yes, I do. Okay. Coughlin in the last three years, years has done more with the Giants than Parcells has done with the Cowboys. And you can look it up. He's gone to the playoffs twice. He's won a division. So I don't understand what your problem with is. It's the 12-year-old quarterback that they have that pouts and whines all the time. That's the problem. It's that Coughlin's not the problem. Ryan, if you give Bill Parcells this team, we will win four Dude, championships the in 12 the years. Of a team. The Cowboys are more talented of a team. One every three years? About. Yeah, one every three. Like a weird Olympics type deal. Why not just go on a roll like a dynasty and get them all at once? And then, further of all, there's no way Parcells is staying alive for 12 years. <laughs> that just is not going to happen. But why can't he do anything with the Cowboys? Parcells won a championship with Jeff Hostetler. Come on, don't don't start saying Tom Coughlin's a better coach than the, they Parcells. They both got there at the same time, Dave. I, I, the numbers are there. I mean, Coughlin's done a better job with the Giants than, than Parcells has done. With I'm the telling you right now, though. I mean, I, and I know Fez, you're acting like you wanted to get rid of your guy, and you know Dave wants to get his. Other, I I think there's only one coach in football today that I consider a fucking superstar coach. Belichick? Mm-hmm. I can't think of another guy. Maybe you can look over to Seattle and go, there's a guy who's got a, a real strong thing. But I would not put him in the old, you know, Landry fucking genius coach thing. You don't think Dungy's up there? I mean, with he's had great success in two different conferences? I don't know. I think if, if Dungy gets, like, a, a big game under his title. Dungy's a fucking loser. And he's going where? The Minnesota University of Minnesota? The rumor was that he would leave the Colts after this season and go to the University of Minnesota. Instead, uh, fucking somehow New York paid for his extension. They paid for him <laughs> to stay there another two years. I don't know how you put up with that team, Dave. I can't do it anymore. I, you, I'm gone. You, you, you're not watching any sports. No, sir. I am out of sports. I can't live my life around sports. Every team just breaks my heart. Even the Yankees. And I can't. I can't be a. Sl I'm a slave to these sports franchises these days. I have too much with Notre Dame, the Nets, the Yankees, Giants. I can't. I need other things. I'm gonna collect stamps, do something. Hmm. That doesn't sound as fun as watching sports, but it's your decision again. I can understand that the guy wants to give up, doesn't like the way he's traded. There's no way for, there's no reason that fans have to sit there and take everything that a team hands them. Why should you be there forever for a team that at the very top doesn't care about you? Right. 90% of the fans want him gone. You might as well shit in all of our hats because that's what you're, that's what you're, you're telling us by not getting rid of them. I had news for you. You and Fez are becoming increasingly obsessed with people shitting on you. I'm noticing the references all the time. All right, I'll say then they're not turning an open ear to us. I want to know something about the two of you guys. Right. And I ain't going to judge you. Is anything happening between you and are you shitting on each other? Is there some kind of scat parties? Because you're both bringing it up. No, there's no, no scat parties. There's, there isn't any. I promise you that. Swear to God. I'll swear to God. I'll swear to God. All right, you go to hell. Yes, I know that. No scat parties. Are you pissing on each other? Anything? No. That's not happening either. Because he smells like shit, and you're bringing it up. Yeah. Well, that is a funny coincidence, but... Is it funny? Because I've had to do a show in here. 
That's only happened with me one time. Guys shitting on you? No, no, where I, I accidentally pissed on someone. It was like the worst thing that's ever happened to me in a public bathroom. Worst thing. Worst or best? Worst. You know how I get pee shy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and the only way I can use a public restroom is if... I'm just bursting that I have to go so bad that I can't take it. How long have you been waiting to tell this story? It seems like it's even planned, doesn't it? Just come, you know, I've got an interesting little story. You pissed on a guy. What happened was I go into this public restroom. I'm just dying. I'm pissing away, and I'm pissing really hard, too. And everything is splattering because everything's coming out so fast. Because you waited so long? Because I waited so long. Where was this at? This was, like, at a rest stop. I was on, the, I was on a road trip. Let me guess. Gay guy in a rest stop <laughs> pisses on another man. Now wants to share the story. So I'm pissing so hard that it's splattering everywhere. I guess it was going underneath the stall uh, divider the, in between the urinals and hitting the other guy's leg. And the guy actually said something to me about it. What did he say? He said, hey, you want to watch the spraying over there? And I was just like so humiliated. That you came. That I hate, you know, I hate using a public restroom. And then this happened. It was the worst thing ever. Wow. And that's, that's, the, that's the closest I've ever come to any of that activity. What activity? Of pissing or sh uh, crapping on somebody. Of any of that stuff. You didn't come close. You actually did it. You I, sick bastard. And I know. And I'm you pissed on a stranger in a rest area. I know. And I'm humiliated by it. And I'm like, I couldn't get out of that place and back on the road fast enough. You have amazingly strong piss that this... He held it forever because he's afraid to piss in these places. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, it was one of those things where it's like, if I didn't go immediately, I was just going to wet my pants. It had just, I had just held it way, way too long. And you got your dick underneath the thing and pissed on the guy's leg? No, it wasn't underneath the thing. It was underneath the divider. It was in one of those, you know, you know, some of those journals that go right to the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So I was splattering so hard, it was coming out with such force that it splattered underneath the divider and hit the guy's bare leg. He was in shorts. So disgusting. I know. I'm not proud of it. Aren't you? You tell the story on the air. I've never seen you sit up so high. <laughs> Bad things will happen in public bathrooms. Bad things are good. Bad. Hey, Matt. Matt, you're around to Fez. Yeah, Fez, is this really happening to you? You just heard it in that Eddie Murphy movie, Distinguished Gentleman. Oh, yeah. A lot of times, Fez will watch a DVD, and I come in and tell the story like it happened to him. This actually happened to me. Are you black? No. Okay. I thought I caught him. No, I'm not black. Do you live in Bubble Hill? No. This, Yeah, this is a true embarrassing story from a, from a restroom. Was Joe Piscopo with you? No, he was not with me. Hmm. Hey, John, John, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, hi, buddy. It's Fez, I'm really sorry about this. I mean, I was the guy that had the dream about you and me on the cruise and everything, so don't take it personal, but we're going to have to change your name to Bukaki Boy now. What's his cruise dream he had? I have no idea what he's talking about. Fez. I don't. I honestly don't. Whatever he's talking about, it did not uh, stay stuck in my mind. Uh, all right, I got just got an email from Carter, and he says here's some stuff that he has that you can play. He's got a band called Aberdeen City. Do you know them, uh, Earl? Yes, I do. Very familiar with them. Yeah. All right, I want you to uh, look for that. And then he's got somebody uh, uh, else called Mason Proper. Do you know them? Yes, I do. I'm very familiar with them also. What's your name? All right. I want you uh, to check them out, too. I want to play them a little later on in the show today. Yeah, we definitely do that. What do you say definitely do that? Why wouldn't you have done it up to this point? By spring of 07, Ronnie. I don't want to hear another spring of 07 deal. Yeah, we won't, well, we'll play them this afternoon. Oh, hold on. Man. This afternoon? What's that mean? After 3? No, I mean, well, within now and 3 p.m. 
What's he talking about? <laughs> he is out of his fucking mind. He really is not. You're not acting like... You, at, at best, the most comfortable you've ever been with me is like seeming like you're on a job interview. At worst, you're literally shitting yourself. Well, the afternoon's between one and three, right? <sighs> But what is wrong with him? But why speak so formally? You're not our Mater D. You're not our inefficient Mater D. That you, uh, you shall be seated between one and three p.m. Would you like some free crab puffs? <laughs> I would. <laughs> I know. I'm fucking starving today, right? Honestly, I, didn't I don't know. want to wait till fucking uh, the end of the show. I didn't know I was talking that formally, but you did not you're, realize. You're talking like you're walking on eggshells. I didn't want it to come across that way, but. If but, but I I guess I am coming up across like I'm, walking, I'm coming up on walking on eggshells. You're thinking to yourself, I lied about Ron Wood and I got caught. I didn't lie about Ron Wood. Ron Wood's gonna happen. <laughs> that is definitely gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna be a spring to remember on the Ron and Fez show on XM two oh two. Who was the last guest we had on this fucking show? Uh, off the top of my head, Robert Randolph. And that was how long ago? That was uh, mid-November, right before Thanksgiving, I believe. Uh, that was a long time ago. I believe, by the way, I love that fucking album. It's unbelievable that kid is done. Yes, Colorblind is the name of the album. It's great. doesn't matter what the name is. I'm just saying I love it. Um, hey, it's Mikey Boy. Mikey. Hey, guys. I have a, a bad public restroom peeing story. I was uh, eight years old, and I was at the roller skating rink, and I had to go to the bathroom. But, you know, I went in on the, ski on the uh, roller skates, and I'm standing at the urinal, and there's a, a teenager, black guy, who's much, much bigger than me. He's right to the right of me. And I'm going to the bathroom, and some time, while I'm peeing, I kind of slip and slide and basically turn, do a 90-degree turn, and pee all over the guy's leg. <laughs> and uh, I was incredibly scared. But either the guy didn't acknowledge it or, or just didn't even notice at all. So he just walked up and left, but it's pretty awful. So How old was he? He had to have been like 15 or 16 years old. So I bet old. you were such an adorable little kid, too, Mikey. <laughs> so you guys are pissing on people all the time. Yeah, not on purpose. Yeah, accidentally. You know, um, Mikey actually just brought back a memory to me. I This one was fucking hidden. When I was like a little kid, I had to be like five or six. I go into this uh, bathroom down to shore. It was like a public bathroom. And I walked in there. I got to fucking piss, but these older boys are there, and they're, like, yelping, and it's happening, and they're fucking on. They're flushing frogs down the toilet, Ugh. and I fucking see this, and I'm, like, a little kid. And they're like, kid, look at this, and they're just flushing, and I see a fucking frog, like, looking like it's trying to fight its way up and get sucked <laughs> down, and I had to fucking maintain and act like, yeah, it's pretty interesting. And I think to myself, these fuckers are going to end up flushing me next. <laughs> Pissing it out. That, that, oh, that to me is traumatic. It kind of was, in a way. Because the fucking frog was, like, little and didn't fucking do anything, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. You know, like, when you're a little kid, you, you relate to small things in the world. Bunnies and fucking, you know, little yeah. puppies and shit. And I just seen these fucking vicious older mutts that had to be hayseed fucking morons. Flushing these fucking frogs down the toilet and laughing like they were terrorists. They were so fucking happy with it. I can just picture this the frog struggling to fight against the current at the whirlpool. Yeah. And I had to be like Mr. Orange. Sit there, <laughs> piss, keep my cool, and then leave. That's why nothing in the world is more frightening to a child than teenagers. You're just like, holy shit, we gotta go. Oh, There's fucking teenagers on the corner. Me and my friends would literally yell, like, if we were cutting through the woods, there was two neighborhoods, and you had to cut through the woods. If even 100 yards away you saw a teenager, we would yell at each other, teenagers, <laughs> and take the fuck off. Yeah. Because they, like, you felt like they would prey upon you when you were a kid. They would see you and run it at you. Like, you were a fucking rabbit and they're a wolf. They absolutely would. And whatever they had in their hands, they would throw at you. Yeah. You were just targets for the teenagers to kill. It, it was and sometimes they were our older brothers. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, we and, and, we and, were and all older, the younger brothers. And your older brother's friends. Yeah. And you would yeah. be like, wait, I'm your brother. Yeah. Why are you allowing your friends to <laughs> yeah. fucking, you know, piss on me and staple my <laughs> hands together? 
Wait a minute. You got pissed on again? I got no, because I was relaying with you guys, and I I got. Who are you guys? I never got pissed on. I never pissed on another man. My brothers locked me up in the broom closet. Real fun idea, and it was a closet about three feet tall that we would keep the dustbuster in, and it had a cabinet uh, over it, yeah. so you can open a open the top doors where there was just a grating, and my brother and a couple of his friends opened it up, locked me in, opened it up, and pissed on my head, and then kept <laughs> me locked in the broom closet. For what felt like fucking hours, I've since talked to my brother about it, and he said, oh, only 45 minutes. 45 minutes in a broom closet to an eight-year-old who just got pissed on is Vietnam torture. Why didn't you fucking kill him to this day? He's still three inches bigger than me. You still can't take him? No. He sleeps, doesn't he? Yeah, that's true. That's true. He does. He does sleep. I could take him then. That's a good point. You got an iron in the house? Yes. Hit him in the fucking head with the pointed part of the iron. I don't understand people that don't get even. My shit from the old days. That is beyond brother teasing, too. Yeah. Uh, 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 Mikey boy. Yeah. Would you like to come back in, relive this, and pee on Earl? <laughs> no. Okay. Just to show us exactly what happened. I mean, how did you slip on a 90-degree angle? Well, I was on roller skates. That was oh. the problem. Just wasn't too sure of myself. I'm eight years sure. old. In all those cases, you know, you slide. You know. You're sliding around. You got your dick out. You're pissing all over the place like a sprinkler system. Oh, it's awful. And of the one guy that you piss on is that, you know, this thing should be like in a movie. People would love to see it in a movie. A guy who can't skate well trying to use the bathroom. <laughs> I forgot, like, at the skating rink that you would skate into the pistol. I forgot all about that. You're holding on to the fucking stall. All right, Mikey boy. All right, see you guys. Hey, Mikey boy, by the yeah. way, I'm a little upset with Just John trying to uh, marshal people up behind uh, Dave. I wanted this to be fair. Yeah. I mean, oh, you mean so the support thing? Well, yeah. I think it's happening all over the place. I mean, there's a big support thing on FBA. There's a big support thing on the MySpace page. And I think some of the people in Whackbag are coming out against Dave. So you have people coming all over the place. It's, it's you know, whoever's going to get in on... on uh, I really think that we should just sit back, look at the bit on Friday, and decide from there. Just let it naturally progress. Yeah. You're right. I agree with that, too, Mr. B. Let's just let's cut it straight and clean, yeah. right down the middle. Vote him out. No, straight and clean. Mm. You know, we're going to keep this one honest. On Friday on the Ron and Fez show, Eastside Dave will be delivering his board gossip. It's been so bad lately that now he says that if this thing tubes yet again, he will leave the show. I, I'm getting that correct, right? Well, he said he would put himself up for the vote, and if the listeners voted him out, he would take 20 calls. Yes. And if the majority wanted him gone, majority, he would leave the show. 11 to 9. And that's both shows. That is, both shows. 11 yeah. to 9. There's a and lot at stake here. And if you stay, I only really want you to stay with one show. The two shows is too exhausting for you. Oh, man. Dave, why would you do something so stupid that's so out of your own control? Yeah. Well, I don't. I feel like there's a lot of people, there's a silent majority, as Richard and Nixon said. Who, who don't do, call. Who do like what I do. Well, they're going to call if they like what they hear on Friday. Well, Nixon lasted. We all know how that worked out. Well, that's true. You know, here's the odd thing, uh, Dave, that you don't know the history of the show. It's always been me and Fez and just a revolving door of guys that we burn out. Oh, no, I know that. You're at the burnout stage right now. I don't feel it. Yeah. It's not time for you to keep... You can't keep up. No, they never feel it yeah. when they're at the burnout stage. It's only obvious to everyone else in the room. Yeah. Well, then the, the callers will speak, but I don't feel it at all. I feel as energized as a rabbit. Uh, Mikey boy, we'll talk to you uh, later on, buddy. All right, see you guys. See you at the cool. roller rink. That's my favorite right there, Mikey boy. I don't think I like Fez as much as I like Mikey boy. Well, you gotta like me best. I'm your best friend. Yeah, but I I'm stuck with you. Where Mikey boy, I actually choose to like. You, I kind of feel some kind of odd obligation to. You would choose to like me if I had just met you today. If I just met you today? Uh-huh. I would tell you, you smell and I throw up. And I mean, today, I don't know what it is. And I am, my stomach is finally starting to get used to it. But it's been a very difficult hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, well, I mean, I didn't get to shower. I didn't get my shower last night because I didn't feel like it and I didn't get a shower this morning. No water in my apartment. So you're not catching me at my best. I'll admit, I'm a little grungy today. I bet I sent somebody over to that apartment right now, there's water running. I think mm -hmm. that you just uh, didn't want to shower today. Why wouldn't I want a shower? Why wouldn't I want to feel my freshest? Why would they turn off the shower in the morning when people are fucking getting up and going to work? That doesn't happen. 
I, I asked, and then there's a memo in the elevator that says, due to a water emergency, uh -huh. the water will be shut off the, this morning and until 4.30 p.m. What time did they shut it off? Uh, they shut it off, I believe, about 8. Seems early. Mm. Why not shut it off at 10 and then go to 6? That would make more sense. But if it's an emergency, I don't know. What time do you normally get up in the morning? Um, I usually get up early, like, uh, I usually get up around 7, but I save my shower for the last. It's the last thing I do before I go out the door. Why? I don't know, it just feels good. Keep the stink as long as you possibly can? <laughs> I don't want to keep the stink. All right, we got a break here.